previous videos, we have explored activities, explicit intents, and implicit intents. In this video, we're going to explore the broadcast receiver, which is also triggered by these things called intents. Broadcast receivers can be used to help us make our app abide by the Android quality guidelines of Enchant, Simplify, and Amaze. Simplify my life, keep it brief, and also only show me what I only show what I need when I need it. So don't clutter the user interface is what we're saying here. Now, what does this mean and how a broadcast receiver is going to help? Well, a broadcast receiver is something in our app that will listen for certain events happening. And we can take advantage of those events happening and take some action based on that. Here's a sample of the first GPS of plant screen that I did for plantplaces.com mobile. And I knew when I released it that this screen was too complicated, but I could not think of how to make it simpler. And here's the current version. You see a much simpler screen that actually does more functionality than this previous screen, but it does it, uh, it, does it with fewer widgets. So what's the key? Well, here's the thought. If you have a button on your screen, it means that the user has to take some action or make a decision. The first thought is, is the user the best person to make this decision? Or does the device have enough information to make the decision without the user? Look at the upload button here. We're trusting that the user knows the best time to upload. But maybe we do. Maybe the app does. So we, can, we would want to upload. We might upload GPS data. We might upload pictures. That's going to take a long time and going to take a lot of energy. Maybe we want to upload only when we're plugged in and charging and connected to Wi-Fi. These are two things we can listen to with a broadcast receiver. Also, select a plant used to require that you go to a search screen and then enter search criteria, select a result, come back to this screen. But what if we just pre-populated the plants and put them in an autocomplete text? We can do that pre-population when we're on Wi-Fi because the plant data is just text data, which is pretty lightweight compared to images. These are things we can do with a broadcast receiver. So now I'm going to go to Android Studio, and we're going to think about this broadcast receiver. Now, one major note, and if you know an exception to this rule, please let me know in the comments, and I'll be happy to make an update. The note is uh, the broadcast receiver... I don't know of any way to test that using the emulator. This is one thing that you really just have to test by running your code on an actual device. I don't know any way to, to simulate network on or off or uh, Wi-Fi connected or disconnected. So this is one that's best to test on the device. And again, if you know a way, uh, let me know. I, I would be more than happy to know that and update this slide. So cre to create a broadcast receiver, we choose new and then we choose other. And then we choose Broadcast Receiver. Uh, I'm going to call this one Synchronize Broadcast Receiver. And I'm going to choose Finish. This is going to add the Broadcast Receiver to our Android manifest. And it's also going to create the source code for our Broadcast Receiver. This onReceive method is what gets called when one of these uh, events happens. Now, you, you might use, you probably use apps that use a broadcast receiver. Uh, maybe you haven't thought about what it's called, but if you have a car with Bluetooth and you have a device with Bluetooth, a lot of times you get in your car and it synchronizes to Bluetooth, and then you can play your music over the Bluetooth radio, uh, over Bluetooth. Uh, that's an example of a broadcast receiver. Or you pull your headphones out of the device and the music turns off. That's another good broadcast receiver. So... A lot of these things, Bluetooth, headphones, Wi-Fi power, these are all items that we can listen for. And we have to declare which ones we want to listen for by creating an intent filter. So in the Android manifest, I'm going to say intent-filter within the receiver. And then that's going to automatically close. Then I'm going to say action, Android, colon name equals, and then let's say I want to listen for power on and power off so I can do that synchronize. I'm going to say android.intent.action.action, .action, power connected, 
and then terminate this, and then we'll make another line. And we're going to say power disconnected. Now there are several options that we have for Wi-Fi. So for Wi-Fi, I'm going to say uh, action, whoops, Android colon name equals, and then I'm going to say Android dot net dot Wi-Fi dot Wi-Fi underscore state underscore changed and terminate and then action android colon name equals android dot net dot wifi dot state underscore change and then action android colon name equals android dot net dot con dot connectivity change like so you can create your own uh, intents and broadcast receivers within your own app. Uh, this is the way that I like to do it for mine, though, is to listen for, listen for uh, events that are coming from the outside world. Now this gives me enough information to stub out my synchronized broadcast receiver. In the broadcast receiver, first of all, I will remove the uh, unsupported line. There we go. Uh, in the broadcast receiver, we need to figure out which event we are receiving. Is it uh, power connected? Is it power disconnected? Is it Wi-Fi? So I'm going to say if intent, now what's intent? It's this uh, value that's getting passed in here. That's the information that tells us what just happened. Dot get action dot equals intent dot action underscore, whoops, I missed something, didn't I? Action underscore power underscore connected. Whoops. Okay. Uh, power connected. Well, if we have power connected and we have Wi-Fi, then we can upload. So I'll make a Boolean. I'm going to say Boolean. Uh, power, and we'll say boolean power equals false. We'll assume false unless we know better. Okay, boolean power, uh, sorry, boolean Wi-Fi equals false. Again, we'll assume false until we know better. So action power connected, we're going to say power equals true. Okay, else if intent dot get action dot equals intent action power disconnected okay open curly close curly power equals false so set it back to false if we notice that the power has been disconnected okay now we need to find out if we're on Wi-Fi so I'm gonna say context and what's context context is the item that's passed in the other item passed into on receive What's important about context is it tells us a lot about our application. It tells us where its private directory is on the SD card. It also allows us to do things like access the database, the SQLite database for our application, uh, set up array adapters and things like that, and also show toasts. Normally we have context because any action class, or sorry, any um, activity extends from context. And so if we're in an activity or a class that extends activity, we automatically have context. The trick here is that we're not extending activity, but broadcast receiver. But we still get the context passed in here. And so, uh, so we will be able to do things like raise toasts, talk to the database, and many of the other things that a normal activity class could do. Here we're going to get a service. So I'm going to say context system service. And I have to give it a name, so I'm going to use a constant, context.connectivity service. And then I'm going to assign this to a new local variable with Control-Alt-V. And we are going to call this Connectivity Manager. And we want to change this from object, which is the, uh, the, the superclass of everything, to Connectivity Manager. It's probably going to redline on us. Alt enter will fix that. And then Alt enter again to add a cast. Now we can say 
connectivity manager dot get active network info. Okay, once again, control alt V to assign to a local variable, and we're going to just call that uh, active network info. That's fine. So I'm going to say if active network info is not null, do we have something there that's active at least? That's what we're saying first. Do we have something that's active? And active network info dot get type equal equal connectivity manager type Wi-Fi. See there's several different types here, Bluetooth, Ethernet, mobile, and then down off screen a little bit there's VPN, Wi-Fi, WiMAX, several options. I'm going to choose Wi-Fi. Open curly, close curly, equals true. And if any of these are not the case, if we do network or it's not Wi-Fi, we're going to say Wi-Fi equals false. Okay, now we have enough information to take our events, to run our, basically run our uh, activities that are based on either power or Wi-Fi or both. So I'm going to say if power and Wi-Fi, then let's say upload. Okay, and we're going to pass in the context variable. Now I haven't defined what an upload method is yet. Alt enter, create method upload. Okay. We haven't given, we haven't gone through yet what we need to do for an upload method, how we're going to do the synchronization. So let's hold that thought till later. We'll actually do that logic when we get to it, which is not right now. But we'll just stub this out for the moment. Now I'm going to say if uh, Wi-Fi, then we're going to say download. And again, pass in context. And alt enter and create method. Okay, so again, we'll fill those out when we get to that point. And also notice that upload requires both power and Wi-Fi because we're going to be uploading plant pictures. But download is just downloading raw data. That's going to be downloading some raw JSON data, which isn't very large, isn't very power intensive. Most, it might take about a minute to synchronize uh, the data that we have. So that we're not worried about power, but we would like to be sure we're on Wi-Fi. So this stubs us out. This gives us a good start. One other thing that we might want to consider as well is that just being plugged into Wi-Fi isn't enough. Uh, we might also want to know, are we actively on a network or is it searching for an IP address? Because as soon as we're connected, or as soon as we're on Wi-Fi, you know, it could take a moment for it to... Um, it could take a moment for it to actually get an address if we're maybe on a hotel's Wi-Fi, we need to sign in or something like that. It could take a moment for that connection to actually happen. Uh, okay, that's one consideration. Another consideration is because you're going to want to test this on an actual device, one thing I would recommend is put a toast in here. And remember, because we have context, we're allowed to use toast. So toast dot make text, and guess what that first and then put a message downloading okay and then toast dot length long and then show so we can still show toast this is effectively a ui element uh, i would not keep these in though i would only use those for testing purposes because if not if you have a user who's plugging in or out a lot or getting on and off of wi-fi quite a bit uh, these messages are going to get annoying so put them in there for testing, but take them out before you go to production. So I hope this has been helpful. Let me know what you think, what kind of uses you found for broadcast receivers. I look forward to seeing your comments. Thank you.